Hi, I'm Hazel, and I don't know about you, but all of this recent talk of covenant abilities and soulbinds and conduits is distracting from the fact that my choice is going to be 90% about the fashion of it all. Today we are looking through every covenant armor set and cloak so that together we can get no closer to permanent decisions about what we're doing in Shadowlands. All of these sets have been data mined, but they're not accessible in the alpha just yet, so for this footage I'm using the Wowhead model viewer. Let's start by taking a look at cloaks. Each covenant has three cloaks. As you progress within your covenant, you'll unlock the higher tiers of cloak option. Uh, think the Rathian cloak, but more. So these are the Kyrian ones, and as we look through these, I think that it's quite clear that the word cloak really just means backslot transmog. It's more a utility term than anything else because most of these things are not going to keep you warm in the winter, nor are they particularly cape-like, but goodness gracious are they cool. Uh, so of course for the Kyrian we have these wings and then some other things that came before the wings because look at the wings. This third tier is giving me feelings that I don't know if they're in spite of the shirtless hairy man with mutton chops or because of the shirtless hairy man and mutton chops, but for whatever reason this look is kind of working for him. Over in the Necalords, which is the Maldraxian Covenant, this is the first tier of cloak. You've got kind of a shield situation with a little bit of a flag that hovers over top of the back. Something to note as we go through these models, I am using humans because they seem to have the fewest issues so far with previewing these, but their eyes are a little bit freaky. Um, it's almost as though he's looking at the internet and the internet is looking back at him, but um, just just don't worry about it. This one is the rank 2 Maldraxian cloak, once again with the wings, but significantly bonier this time. Um, I did notice something when I tried this on the female, I will show you, I don't know that this is going to go into the game like this, so I think it's a little bit too early for outrage, but I will say that whereas the male character had glorious undead bone wings, the female looks more like she's wearing one of those cute little mini backpacks. Um, I'm, I don't know that the scaling is done, so it's a little, I wouldn't rage tweet just yet, but um, interesting to consider. At tier 3, the Maldraxian Cloak Transmog looks like this. You get these big glowing crystals in kind of this hovering bone setting. Over in Night Fae, here is our tier 1 Night Fae back option. Here is our tier 2 Night Fae back option with real moving animated live glittery moths. How, how can you not? It doesn't appear to float behind the character like many of these cloak transmogs do. This one looks almost as though it is embedded in his skin, which if you ask me, fits. When you rank up to your third level of Night Fae back, you lose your critters, but you get a pair of lamps, you get some extra satchels, the whole thing becomes much more utilitarian. And I love the way that a lot of these cloaks seem to be generating light. I think that's going to make them look really, really good, especially in some of the gloomier zones of Shadowlands. That leaves us with Venthyr Cloak options. Here is the first rank of Venthyr Cloak. You get a spooky little loot with a couple of lanterns. The rank 2 Venthyr Cloak looks like this, and I think this is one of the ones that has one of the most stunning and striking silhouettes from the front. To get the best effect on many of them, you need to spin them to the back, and I think that's fine because honestly, this whole extravagant cloak transmog business is brilliant because this is how we look at our characters. You know, you're always looking at them from the back, so having all the fancy stuff back here is perfect. Uh, this is the rank 2 Venthyr Cloak, just some extra knives just in case. Rank up to tier 3 with the Venthyr, and here is your final cloak option. Look at that. You have a gravestone, which I think is a really good flex in a war game like this. You're just showing your enemy that A, you're going to kill them, but B, you're very considerate about it and you've prepared. Look at that. Lovely. Next, it's time to dig into the Covenant sets themselves. I'm looking at these with the mindset of trying to choose a Covenant for a particular character, so I have broken them out by armor type rather than Covenant. Starting with Plate, this is what your Kyrian Plate set is going to look like. If you join the Necrolords on your Plate character, your Covenant set is going to look like this. This is shown with the tier 1 cloak, but of course you can swap that out for any of the three once you have unlocked them. Plate classes that join the Night Fae are going to get access to this plate set of armor. Plate 
and played characters joining the Venthyr of Revendreth will get to wear this. I am particularly enamored with the shoulder gargoyles. Wow. If it is a hunter or a shaman character that you're thinking of, this is your male Kyrian set. If they join the Necrolords, that male character is going to get to wear this. I love the asymmetry here. I think asymmetrical shoulders, particularly with a very large skull that is on just one side, is very much a hunter thing. Shamans, of course, as well, but hunter transmog is the thing that comes to mind when I look at this set. A male wearer joining the Night Fae will get access to this set. This set is a little bit lower on my list personally, I think just because the bright blue gems with the gold framing screams Seventh Legion to me, and I've spent a little bit too long looking at those sets. And if that male wearing character joins the Venthyr, this is what that set is going to look like. Here it is on a bigger frame shown with that tombstone back piece. If you are choosing a covenant for your leather wearing character, here is what your Kyrian option is going to look like. I love the effect that we're seeing on the shoulders and the helmet and then a little bit on the boots. A leather wearer joining the Necrolords is going to get to wear this. I don't know if I have words. I mean, I'll find some, but ooh. It's very dumb, but I'm going to need somebody that plays a leather class that joins the Necrolords to walk up to other people in their raid and just ask in slash say, need a hand? Okay, I'm done now. A leather class joining the Night Fae is going to have two options, one with pants and one with a robe. Um, apologies for the texture issue happening on the helmet here. It appears that this is not quite worked out yet in the model viewer. I am assuming that this helmet will have a texture that is not whatever is happening here. But this is the pants version of the set. And there's also a robe option with a skirt. And your final covenant option for a leather wearing class is the Venthyr, and here is your leather Venthyr set. There's a lot to process here, but I love the shoulder architecture, I love the belt with the face with the purple brain jewel, you've got extra knives down by your shin plates, what's not to love? And if you've been keeping track, you'll know that cloth is our last armor type to look at, so here is the cloth Kyrian covenant set. This is one of my absolute favorites. It's one of those sets that looks like clothes you might actually see on a character in a story, while still having interesting lighting effects and cool architecture and silhouette. The silhouette in particular is important to me because as somebody that spends a lot of time in shadow form, sometimes that's all you got. So that's the Kyrian cloth set, and I think that's going to be hard for priests at least to walk away from. If your cloth character joins the Necrolords, this is the set that you're going to get access to. The upward spikes are part of the shield, which is the back transmog, which you can swap out for those other back transmogs, including that big glowing jewel thing. But these long sideways ones seem to actually be part of these shoulders. That's kind of neat. Also, pants. It does not appear that the Necrolord cloth set has a skirt option at this time. And before we click off of this, please take note of those shoes. If your cloth character joins the Night Fae, here is your set. That is quite the helmet. The leaves wrapped over the nose and mouth is quite something. I'm half expecting all the plants in the Ardenweald to have kind of a devil snare vibe where they overtake you and then pull you down so that what remains of you is never to be recovered from the grassy depths. Also reminds me of that poster of Silence of the Lambs with the moth over the mouth. Anyways, and last, admittedly delayed for dramatic effect, here is the cloth. Venthyr set. And fear not, it also comes in a skirt option if robes are more your thing. So this is the one with pants. Here is your robe option, and what a sight to behold this is. I don't know that I am any closer to choosing a covenant for my main. I should probably figure out my main first. I feel like for a shadow priest, you have to go with the Venthyr set. You have to wear this. Imagine this in shadow form. You can't not. But if you spend more time healing, I feel like there's a very strong argument to be made for the Kyrian set with the big wings. And then of course, there's that one Night Fae back transmog that had living moths on it. How is anybody supposed to choose? I suppose it's a good thing that the experience buff is being extended until the Shadowlands pre-patch, so if you're looking at these sets and you just can't decide which one you want, you can just keep leveling characters, so eventually you'll have one character for each. Problem solved. 
So those are the Covenant sets. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.